Rizdel. I am a registered acupuncturist and Chinese herbal practitioner in Cambridge, Ontario. So today I'd like to talk about uh, cannabis in Chinese medicine. So um, since the 2019 October, uh, recreational use of marijuana uh, cannabis has been legalized and a lot of people has been using day to, uh, in their everyday life. So today, uh, I'd like to talk about it. So the medical uh, use in Western medicine, and this is I just quickly searched on the internet. I'm not uh, specialized in Western medicine. So they use, often the medical marijuana has has been pra uh, prescribed to the patients with chronic pain, uh, often back pain uh, or headache, uh, drug addiction, um, mental illness such as depression, anxiety, or uh, excess stress, uh, cancer, a part of the cancer treatment, and some neurological uh, issues such as MS and epilepsy. Mm. I my husband uh, has taken the medical marijuana for to manage his chronic back pain. Uh, he has um, degenerative disc diseases in his lumbar spine, and he's been prescribed to use medical marijuana. Uh, and I asked him if it's been helping him, and then he said, for him. And then I believe this is the case for most of patients, but they don't, medical marijuana does not take the pain away from the site. It does not treat the pain itself. It more distract you um, from the pain. It gives this uh, sensation of uh, high, uh, so you, you don't focus on the pain as much. And in this way, the medical use of the marijuana for the chronic pain is the same with um, alcohol and opioids. Uh, for the drug addiction, um, I, 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 if you have addictive personalities, and then addiction is a uh, disease, it's not a, it, it may have started with your choice, but it is a disease. And if you've been addicted to uh, some opioids or alcohol, sometimes they, it, it's, they, they slice their um, uh, addict, this, the, this substance that they're addicted to into something else. And then sometimes that the marijuana is used for that. And for sure, marijuana is better than uh, any opioids or alcohol. And some mental illnesses, uh, cancer. I think it's just for to um, uh, same thing uh, away from take take you away from the pain, or it, it treats the um, uh, nausea uh, from the cancer treatment. Um, my my first husband uh, who had lung cancer, uh, he he had um, used uh, medical marijuana. Uh, to treat the nausea from the chemotherapy. And then, um, yeah, the epilepsy and MS, you sometimes see on like, like you know, um, TV shows, like, you know, mi mi this uh, miracle cure for this epilepsy was the uh, cannabis kind of, you know, TV show. Anyway, so the these are the basically the use of the uh, medical marijuana in the Western medicine, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot more than that. Uh, and cannabis in Chinese medicine, uh, surprisingly, cannabis is not a Chinese medicine that we use um, in day-to-day -day, uh, treatment. Cannabis seeds are Chinese medicine, and only to use to uh, moisten the intestines to treat constipation. So the cannabis leaves or cannabis, um, the buds, are not used as a Chinese medicine. Uh, however, however, like it, I know, like you know, I think I've read in somewhere that the human beings been using cannabis for like you know at least three thousand years or more. So I'm pretty sure, like you know, somewhere in China, people use Chinese medicine to maybe manage those issues. But in Chinese medicine, cannabis is not a Chinese medicine. Um, 
if if we if it's uh are asked if it's good or not often we probably say it's not good for you uh occasionally we may say it is good for you but if if that's the case we only suggest this uh cbd oil under the tongue and this doesn't happen often uh i I don't think I've ever said it to anyone in my clinic. Uh, what it does is uh, a THC or CBD, it rapidly increases the body fluid uh, in, the, in the system. That's what it, cannabis does. Um, now, uh, body fluid, I, I wrote it here. Uh, what's body fluid? Body fluid is a healthy fluid in the body if it's in the stomach, it's a, your stomach a digestive fluid. If it's in your mouth, it's a saliva. Um, if it's in a, a brain, it's like a healthy brain. I don't know, I call that brain juice, but like, you know, the nourishment for the brain. If it's in the intestine, it's an intestinal fluid uh, or li a healthy lymphatic fluid. It's a healthy fluid that uh, sustains your body mechanism. So it's, it's a healthy thing and it, it's getting it's usually nourished by the healthy eating and resting. Um, so you may think, so, so maybe it's a good thing because of, uh, cannabis rapidly increased the, rapidly increased the uh, body fluid. However, if you already have um, enough body fluid in the system, or if you already have a, a excess amount of the fluid that is a pathogenic amount of the fluid or pathogenic quality of the fluid or if you have a poor digestive system or if you already have a poor system to start with this healthy body fluid instantly turning into the dampness which is a pathogenic the dampness uh it dampness is uh literally the dampness it's you can feel in the air when it's the air is um has a lot of dampness it's sticky and then it's thick it's unhealthy it, it it's it's unhealthy uh substance and then it's accumulated through the unhealthy lifestyle such as junk food such as not sleeping well or such as um mm, any drug abuse would cause the dampness and then it also uh uh stress would accumulate the dampness too by um uh, decreasing the healthy function of the digestion okay so the cannabis can be good but the most of the time it's pathogenic it's because most of the north american have um uh, dampness to start with in their system explain it so what what can you get so if you have a body fluid deficiency cannabis can be uh effective and then it can give you the a positive result if you have a body fluid deficiency but if you already have a normal amount of the body fluid or excess amount of the body fluid that turn into the dampness it the cannabis use of the cannabis only uh does damage to you okay um Often, often people have both uh, body fluid deficiency and uh, excess dampness. Um, how? So you can have a body body fluid deficiency in say in um, diaphragm above, uh, like in your brain or like in your um, face, like upper orifices, like you know dry mouth, dry eyes. Uh, then. It, it may do good for the body fluid deficiency part, but they, a lot of the um, North Americans uh, have uh, excess dampness uh, in the stomach. So, so it doesn't do good, right? Because, um, yeah. So I'd like to explain one by one how, how this works, okay? So stress lowers the um you know the stress affects your digestive system and then this is you know you don't need a science to prove this you know it right when you're stressed out you don't digest well 
So the stress is, um, well, I guess if, I, if you talk about the Western medicine, when you are under the stress, your sympathetic nervous system is on the go and that's a fight or flight. But the digestion is the other system, a parasympathetic nervous system. So when you're always under the stress, we're always like a hyper um, alert you know, due to the uh, lifelong stress or PTSD or shock, um, your uh, parasympathetic nervous system may not kick in in the time that it needs to or it stays long enough, so, so your digestion goes down. Um, and it would, because your digestion it goes down, uh, you, you don't produce enough body fluid so you may have already, or you, you may have like an overwhelmingness or burnout. You know, you, you just use your brain more than you nourished. You recuperated, right? So, so the cannabis really uh, reduced the stress because it adds the body fluid. When it's dried and then tired, it adds the juice to it. Um, Overwhelmingness, when you're overwhelmed and you don't know it's, it, this is not a confusion. Overwhelmingness is, I'm done. I cannot take this anymore. But the overwhelmingness is like, you know, I'm so tired. I, I just did like hold my tax for this year or, or, or last 10 years or I just did, uh, I had a five exams. Like my brain is done. I'm done. There's nothing more I can handle. Overwhelmingness. Cannabis can help because it, takes the edge off of the dryness. Uh, same like a burnout, right? Um, brain fatigue, same thing. Or insomnia without thoughts. So so sometimes uh, you, you get prescribed uh, cannabis for the insomnia, but the insom not all the insomnia comes with the same cause. Uh, in Chinese medicine, insomnia is basically uh, your brain is not nourished, so the uh, blood deficiency in the brain. However, the uh, insomnia with uh, sometimes you you don't think you you don't sleep because you think too much. That's a different cause, you know. Uh, so cannabis only works with the insomnia that are you're you're not thinking, you're just laying, but you're wired up. Um, oh, these, uh, these people, stressed out, pe stressed out individuals, overwhelmed, uh, or burnt out, or brain fatigue, they may have some energy, energy spark in the uh, uh, nighttime, you know, because it's a dry heat, dry heat comes more, uh, it's, it's a, it's not a healthy energy, it's really a fake energy, it, it comes out of the dryness of the body fluid, and then they may have more energy, they may think that they have more energy in the nighttime. Uh, it, that hot energy carry to the night and it can't sleep. You know, I'm just wired up. I'm not ready to sleep. And it's not like I'm thinking anything. I'm just laying there. That type, cannabis may help. Um, however, however, if you... If you have a um, normal body fluid or uh, or already have a pathogenic uh, type of the uh, fluid uh, which turn into the dampness, uh, the cannabis will cause anxiety because anxiety is, uh, I, I think I explained to you in the different video that I talked about the mental illnesses, anxiety in Chinese medicine is a damp retention in the head, uh, precisely in this frontal frontal cortex. The front of the uh, brain, you have uh, damp retention, so you have anxiety. Same, same, uh, same cause can can um, same reason can cause this panic attack. So prescribing a cannabis to the uh, people who have uh, anxiety, that's only negative. Mm. Uh, dizziness too, uh, Meniere's disease or uh, general dizziness or uh, vertigos, it, cannabis don't do well because the uh, dizziness is essentially that the dampness got, uh, same thing, anxiety, panic attack, or dizziness. You have a dampness from the unhealthy stomach and then it got shot up to the head. And 
um, create the dizziness. So, so these people already have a pre-existing dampness. Um, so you should never pick cannabis. It, cannabis is not your friend if you have anxiety. Foggy brain, right? Uh, same thing. It's foggy. It's fog. It's like, you know, unhealthy uh, fog uh, creating like, creating this like a uh, um, foggy brain that you can't think sharply. You can't think clearly. If you have a foggy brain, cannabis is not your friend. And you do get a foggy brain, foggy brain when you uh, smoke cannabis, right? Or when you consume cannabis in either way, e eat or smoke. Uh, confusion, um, excess thinking. Excess thinking is that uh, some people ask me like, I, of course I think I'm living, I'm alive, but not everybody constantly think like you know, normal healthy brain can shut off the thinking like you know there's a moment like you know you're just not thinking you i don't know you're just looking at the window or I, I, when at night time i shut off my uh brain like excess thinking is the thinking that you can't control you can't shut off that's pathogenic that's dampness it's uh especially if you think about the one thing over and over and over which i call the hamster wheel thoughts it's a pathogenic. So those are uh, already a sign sign that you have dampness in your brain. So you should never smoke kind of cannabis. It would never help. Uh, insomnia with thoughts, right? So so this excess thinking uh, carry to the, in the bedtime. So you, you can't think. I'm thinking about littlest things or nonsensical things like, you know, you, you may think like different things, multiple things at the same time, but that you think, so you can't sleep. Uh, if you if you cannot sleep because you think too much, cannabis is not your friend. Now these are the dampness, but the, when the dampness, think about it, when the damp are stuck in one area too long, eventually it becomes friend. It be, eventually it becomes thicker substances. So think about that the, there's a river, when then the river is flowing, it, the water is clear. The faster the uh, current is, the clearer the water is, right? But when the water is not flowing well, it, it, or it, it's in a um, pond, it, it starts becoming dirty. It, it will start becoming um, uh, dirty water things start growing inside right and then eventually the water becomes thick like swamp you know water that stays in a glass and if you you know drinking glass if you if you don't drink it and then leave it for like you know i don't know how long maybe a month the water eventually like uh becomes dirty right uh in, if the water is really sticky and thick and dirty, it causes this drama. Uh, it, it starts fabricating the reality. The confusion, uh, confusion goes the next level. And then like, you know, just dropping the pen on the, on the floor, uh, you may think it's the end of the world. You know, I didn't mean by anything, but I say something and then, then this person took it as a, such a twisted, way and then start saying like uh, you don't love me like you know it's not true but they start making a story in their head it, when they start fabricating the stories it's a uh, uh, it's already a friend okay which means it's treatable because it's a symptoms and then when this gets even farther uh serious uh it becomes paranoid uh or skeptic like you know you start thinking like uh, people are always trying to attack you or uh, like, you know, you have this paranoid way of thinking. Like uh, people always, you know, uh, try to steal your mm, idea or it may be true, but maybe it's uh, you're just paranoid about it, right? And then also uh, the thought process is dark. Um, it's 
doomy groomy very dark thoughts like you know oh uh you come for the treatment but the, you have an attitude like this is not gonna work you know word sucks you know this darkness uh and the paranoid comes like you know it, it, it as a from the very uh, severe damp retention in the brain. And some people get paranoid when they smoke pot. That's because they already have a too much dampness in the brain. And then when a m more dampness is added from the smoking pot, it, this dampness turning into the thicker dampness, and then uh, it becomes paranoid. Yeah. If you get paranoid, I think they don't smoke pot because it's very uncomfortable uh, moments. But the, if you ever find that the smoking pot makes you paranoid, you should never smoke it. It's it's not doing any good for you. Now, um, uh, now that the uh, healthy body fluid in the stomach gives you the healthy appetite. Without the healthy, uh, healthy um, body fluid, you wouldn't have an appetite. If you have a dry stomach, you can't eat it. You can't eat anything. Um, so, so I think that's why it works for the cancer patients. It gives you an appetite to eat. Okay. Um, but if you already have enough amount of the uh, body fluid or excess, you know, dampness um and you still get an uh, appetite from this so you will have a moment moment of uh, excess appetite which we you know you may call this as a munchie um but then you you may feel bloated or uh, mm, feel yucky about it because you already have a dampness in your stomach um I do believe that the some uh, epilepsy and tremors can be treated with the uh, uh, CBD oil under the tongue because uh, uh, sometimes uh, the, they are caused by the body fluid deficiency in the uh, muscle, muscle layer, uh, or blood deficiency of the muscle layer. But the, if the reason of the body fluid deficiency or blood deficiency in the muscle layer that causes the epilepsy or tremors, if the reason is from the unhealthy stomach, not being able to produce the healthy amount of the body fluid to nourish the muscle layers, then smoking pot, I, I'm not sure if it will do well. I, I think if the, your stomach is already weak and body fluid deficiency state, like, uh, you know, when maybe you, when you're older or after the chronic diseases and then your pure deficiency, it may do well. Um, but the, I don't think every single epilepsy and then tremor can be treated with uh, use of the cannabis because the, if you have a dampness and if that's the reason of the epilepsy and then tremor it won't help on the other uh, on the other side if you have an excess amount of the dampness it gives you the body heaviness right um i put it here laziness Laziness, I don't like the word because it comes as a bad nuance and I don't, I'm not anti-laziness. Um, but this feeling of the laziness, like a, your thought is heavy, your body is heavy and sluggish, uh, that comes with a uh, little, little bit of pathogenic, right? So body heaviness or a tendency to be um, unwilling to move because your body is too heavy, um, This is a negative effect of the cannabis. So if, if you, most of the North Americans already have a pre-existing dampness in their system from the uh, unhealthy diet or uh, not enough resting, uh, high stress, um, mm, maybe the soil pollutions or water pollution or whatever. Um, I don't, I usually said cannabis is not your friend, especially if you have uh, anxiety, panic attack, dizziness, depression. Uh, it, I don't see how it's going to help. 
you may feel tentatively better because it numbs you, but it's, it's not going to treat. It, it does only actually perpetuate the problems. So, so these are the, uh, uh, how Chinese medicine understands the um, use, of, uh, use of cannabis, efficacy of the cannabis uh, in positive and negative way. And I hope it helps you uh, if you ever given a joint next time, you know? Okay, thank you very much. It was a, this was a Yumi Risdale a presentation about the cannabis in Chinese medicine. Thank you. Bye-bye.